Hi friends, in the last video we discussed the different steps of a training loop like loss dot backward for calculating gradients, why do we do zero grad, uh, different phases in which we have to put a model train mode and value mode uh, and other couple of things right and we by following the fit method that we designed we will be able to train our model right and we save the model weights right once we have our model trained we need to save its weights all you have to do is torch.save and then we save the model.save state dict okay uh, in a pickle file okay the state dict is actually a dictionary containing the names of the different layers along with the weights associated with it so in this video we are going to look at how we can use the trained model to make predictions on the test data set okay that's one uh, simple thing that we're going to look at the next thing that we're going to look at it is something called test time augmentation so we will also we'll look at what is test time augmentation and one simple way to implement it and how you can tweak with the current implementation of tta to improve your test results okay improve your predictions so let's start with the code so this since this is a very simple one i'm not building anything from scratch we'll just walk through the code okay the first step is creating a model there's a very high chance you would have already created the model in your previous step but uh, sometimes you may have run multiple folds so you want to create the model again then you create a data set so you remember in the data set we said is test is true because we don't we don't have a target while doing predictions on the test data set so we specify is test is true and then here we can either pass train transformations or test transformations to understand what our train or test transformations is, let's go and look at quickly the helper code, okay, which contains this file called this function called get augmentations, which returns two kinds of transformations. One is train transformations and test transformations. Train transformations is where you do a lot of augmentations apart from normalizing the data and converting a PIL image into a torch tensor, right? In test data set, all you do is just convert the PIL image into a tensor file, a tensor format, PyTorch tensor format, and normalize it with the ImageNet stats. Okay. So if you don't want TTA, we'll discuss what TTA is in a minute. If you don't want TTA, then you end up using test transformations. Okay. But in this example, we're gonna look at how what is TTA and how we use TTA. Okay. So we can either pass train transforms or test transforms. For TTA, we pass train transforms, okay? And then we create a data loader. So we have seen what a data loader is. And here, do not forget to pass shuffle is equal to false. For both validation and test, you don't want shuffle is equal to false. For validation also, it's okay in case you put shuffle is true, but for predictions, the test data set, make sure you don't put test false because the you have to map the predictions with the ids and make a submission to kaggle if you make shuffle is equal to true then you will get weird results right and then we have a function here called get threads which is pretty similar to the validation step which we do inside our fit function except for some small changes if you look this part uh, so it's it's almost similar right we take a batch from the Test data loader just that we don't have a target here we put the x batch into gpu we pass it to a model and we pass it through torch.sigmoid okay remember that we have to stick the output of the model to a sigmoid layer to have it val to have it pass values between 0 and 1 we do not do it in training step because we have jeff dot binary cross entropy with logics we use that so we do not uh, pass the output through sigmoid then once we get the output we want to remove it from the cpu because accumulating it the gpu on a list will eventually make the gpu run out of memory so you want to uh, push it to the cpu move the tensor from C gpu to cpu and convert into a numpy array okay and then add it to a list why we are doing that we are accumulating all the results and test spreads okay so that we can do uh, any other operations that we want okay in this case uh, we have something called TTA okay so what we do is okay, let's understand what is test time augmentation right we the, the common practice 
is to apply augmentation while training your algorithm right in order not to overfit one of the free lunch kind of algorithms is test time augmentation what we do is uh, instead of just showing the original image we show slightly modified versions of the image like flipping the image horizontally flipping the image vertically moving it rotation uh, and applying a lot of transformations okay in this case since it's a beginner level starter kernel so what i did is i just took the trade transformations whatever we used for training and i passed it for test time augmentation this actually improves the result by a lot so you can specify how much TTA you want. Those many number of times you end up uh, passing the data loader with slightly different augmentations through the model. You get all the uh, predictions and then you divide it. Since you're summing it up, you have to divide it by the number of TTAs, okay? Then you return it. So once you have the predictions, all we do is we read the sample.submission file. Uh, let's take a quick look at what it is. Okay, I've not imported. Okay, I've not drawn this notebook. Uh, so let's quickly run this notebook. I think this should be enough, right? Let's go here and say read it. Okay, now you should be able to look at what is it containing, right? It contains a bunch of image names and the tar targets are zero. Okay, if you yeah, use shuffle as false. And if they are on the same order, then all you need to do is attach the preds to the target column. Okay, that's what we are doing here. Submission dot target is equal to preds file. Store it in a CSV file. And all you can do is what you can do later is go to Kaggle, and you can go to the particular competition that you are interested in. In this case, it's melanoma classification, and say submit predictions. Okay and then here you submit your predictions okay and then you should be getting some result in the leaderboard okay either you have gone up or gone down i mean you don't go down unless until some uh, there are other people who have got higher score than you and then your rank goes down okay so with this uh, we have completed all the important steps of the kernel okay so in the coming videos we will look at each of the key components or some of the key techniques that you can follow uh, or try out to improve your model's performance okay even in this i would strongly recommend you to try different folds right in this for in this case let's say for example when we split the data right if you look at get train well split let me quickly search it we say uh, the last three tf records is one fold basically there are 15 uh, tf records and the three parts of the three TF records we put into validation data set and that is test training. You can modify this function slightly, okay, in a way that you can give something like a fold ID 0, 1, 2, 3, and then it returns a particular fold of data, a different variant of the data, okay. And then you can train the different models or different validation sets, and then you can take predictions and you can average them okay that's generally called k-fold validation it's the k-foldation model and do an ensemble on it okay that's one key step which you can do to make your predictions more stable the other thing you can do is we have shown how to use efficient at b5 we also showed in our model video that how we can create a resnet or a next model right so you can create a rest next model so what is so we are also talking about a concept called ensemble right what is ensemble you take the output of a particular model of a particular image size and combine it with another model of another image size or the same image size there are different ways of combining it. one simple and more stable way of combining them is just take an average of the results okay uh, these are some that's one important technique that you can try the other thing is the data augmentation you can try to see by either increasing it or decreasing it okay so we have ha have a simple linear layer as a classifier the, the one of the video we discussed that you can have something like global averaging pool and global max pool you concatenate it and then you have a new layer and you can use that right so there are different ways you can tweak your algorithm architecture your augmentation data pipeline you can try a bigger image 
image size in this we tried image size of 256 you can try 384 uh, you can go up to 1024 okay you can try these different things to uh, see how you can improve your score okay as uh, said earlier we will uh, work on uh, some of the key techniques that can help improve these models and we'll discuss about that at a high level Since it's an ongoing competition. We will not be able to uh, share the complete code, but we will uh, Provide you as much information as possible within the rules of the live Kaggle competition Okay, thank you guys if you like the video uh, Please hit the like button and subscribe and if you have any questions you can either uh, Drop it in Kaggle kernels or Kaggle discussion forums where I have posted a thread or you can just leave it in YouTube comments. Thank you guys. Bye-bye